when you believe a negative story and then you react to those painful emotions, you certainly won't have the capacity to experience joy. No. But if you can stop in that moment, when you start to tell yourself that story and you choose to simply notice that, hey, this is a story instead of buying into it, then you open yourself up to experience something that's much more helpful in these dynamics. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds. Understanding the kids' perspective. Romance and partnership. Parenting with great teamwork. And yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Hey there, thanks for taking time to join us today, even in the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. <laughs> We're very excited to share a few things with you today that might make the upcoming celebrations a little more joyful. Yeah, hopefully. And you know, we'd love it if you would be sure to start following the show over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you're not already. Mm -hmm. And while you listen today, how about tapping a star rating and letting us know just if we're bringing value to you or not. And we'd love it if you'd just take a few minutes over on Apple Podcasts to share with other people how the show might be helping you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always so grateful to hear uh, your feedback and, and to hear from you, our listeners. Absolutely. So we're picking up our conversation from last week where we mm -hmm. talked about the common things that many of us experience that tend to come along unexpectedly and steal our joy. Mm -hmm. And not just around the holidays, but really any time these things can come along. Yeah. And some of those joy robbers that we talked about are not necessarily unique to those of us living in a blended family, mm. but there does seem to be a higher potential for us simply because of the complexities that exist in blended family life. Sure. We've got relational tensions and stress, sometimes confusion and disconnection. We experience that trapped teammate and the stranded stranger dynamic. It makes yep. it really tough. For sure. And after last week's episode, maybe we left you feeling a little down in the dumps, right? Because <laughs> we covered some pretty heavy and painful scenarios that we'll probably all end up facing at one point or another in our journey. Yeah. But don't worry, we're not just leaving it at that. Today, we want to share our personal strategies and mindset shifts that has helped us to manage these tough situations, hold on to our joy, and even stay more connected, mm -hmm. even when we're experiencing disappointment or negative thoughts or painful emotions, and even when conflict is about to erupt. Right. So if you missed last week's episode, you might want to go check it out, and we've got a link in the show notes for you to head back there. Uh, and listen to the first part first, and mm -hmm. then then you can hop back over here for part two of the series. Absolutely. And we assure you that there's a method to our madness here. Last week's episode was all about helping you realize that you're not alone in your experience with these joy stealers. Mm. We've been there. We've talked to countless others who have also struggled to hold on to joy. Yep. Sometimes when the pain of joy stealers come our way, it can feel pretty lonely. Mm. And you might start to think there's something wrong with you or with your blended family. Mm. But these challenging situations are common. Yep. So you're not alone. You're actually normal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and one of the best ways to hold on to more joy is to examine what steals it. We all need to develop an acute awareness of our dynamics and how they tend to impact us emotionally so that we aren't blindsided or overwhelmed or paralyzed by discouragement, hopelessness, or defeat. Yeah. We need to be fully cognizant of what's happening when we're confronted with joy-stealing dynamics and we're feeling stuck. So that's what last week's discussion was all about. Yeah, yeah, so important. And now that you've realized you're not alone... And you've gained some awareness of how you might be impacted personally by these dynamics. Now it's time to move forward and hold on to your joy, mm -hmm. even when things get tough. That's right. So let's just hop right in. 
You might recall that first joy stealer, which is those unmet expectations and disappointment. Mm -hmm. And there's an old piece of wisdom that says, better to bend than break, right? We see this principle over and over in things like nature, like how animals and plants are able to adapt to environmental changes, hardship, and threats. I experienced that personally because I grew up in Phoenix, and now we live way up here north of Seattle, almost <laughs> at the Canadian border. And I'll tell you what, my environment is different, and I've had to adapt over the last 30 years to a very different environment. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Bruce Lee once said, the stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while bamboo or willow survives by bending with the wind. Thanks for that, Bruce. <laughs> This is a basic principle that blended family couples need to adopt as well. We've got to be able to embrace flexibility. Yeah. Can you believe I'm saying that, honey? <laughs> I know. Embracing flexibility. I know. Like, it's a beautiful uh, yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, and, and really, the opposite of being flexible is being stiff or rigid. And a rigid approach in these dynamics is not only going to increase the intensity of your disappointment, but in the end, things might just break and fall apart. Because as Ron Deal says, step families are no place for rigid mindsets. Absolutely. And I'm so guilty of that. I'm a planner. If anybody's listening, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a planner and I want to stick with the plan. Sometimes we just get a little too locked in and we need to be able to embrace some flexibility. Yeah, it's so important. Now, we shared last week how we both had some pretty high and some unrealistic expectations around how things should or shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. Honey, I expected you to be patient and accepting and understanding all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you weren't, I experienced some disappointment. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes created doubt for me in our relationship, especially mm -hmm. in those early years. Yeah. And throughout our family's journey, I often expected our kids to be grateful and happy and well-mannered and fully engaged in every family activity, <laughs> including those around the dinner table, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when our reality was far from what I expected or anticipated, well, then I'd experience disappointment and I'd start to doubt myself as a parent. Mm -hmm. My high and lofty expectations were easily shattered and guess what? My joy would be robbed. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, you know, early on, honey, I expected you to be the kind of parent who readily and masterfully handled Annika's disrespectful behavior and her tantrums <laughs> for you to hand down some consequences to teach her valuable lessons right there in the moment. And when you didn't do that, I was frustrated and I was disappointed. And then when you rejected my input and told me to just butt out of parenting, I really experienced disappointment and I started doubting our ability to partner as parents. Mm. I also expected Annika to respectfully comply and change her childish behavior. I mean, she was a kid, but still she should have been acting a little older, right? I don't know. <laughs> she I was five. I, I know. I was like <laughs> expecting teenage behavior or something. And, and when that didn't happen, I expe experienced even more disappointment and doubt that I'd ever be able to manage living in our home without the structure, that rigidity that I was really holding on to. Mm -hmm. My high and lofty expectations were quickly shattered. And honestly, my joy was getting robbed. It was mm -hmm. waning away. Yeah. You know, over the years, though, we have learned the value of flexibility because these dynamics are unpredictable. And it's unrealistic to expect that every expectation will be met. Mm. So instead of getting stuck in disappointment, we must be prepared to bend or pivot or readjust those original expectations. Yep. That's really the best way to hold on to our joy. Mm. And for many years, like we said, we did not do this very well. <laughs> this was one of those things that even though we were told early on to keep our expectations in line, mm. we learned that from Ron Deal, yep. right? Yep. We really were not very skilled at the art of flexibility. Mm. We were both pretty rigid in our mindsets, and that created a whole lot of disappointment over the years mm. and a lack of joy when things didn't go as we expected. Sure. Yeah. Thankfully, though, we have learned how to be flexible and to make a shift in our mindset. So these days, here's the shift we've made. We like to mm -hmm. say, keep your hopes high and your expectations realistic. That's right. You know, it's okay to hope for things to turn out the way that you'd really like. 
Because without hope, it's easy to become really discouraged. Mm -hmm. Hope is a good thing. And it gives us a vision of what we'd like our family to experience more of in the future. And sometimes our hope is met with a win. Mm -hmm. And and it's awesome when that happens. And that's when it's easy to hold on to joy. Of course. But the key is to hold on to those high hopes loosely enough, like with open hands, not clenched fists, knowing that you're going to need to keep your feet rooted in reality as well. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to get what you want. And when you can do that, it starts to pave the way for you to hold on to your joy, even when things don't go your way. In fact, I really believe that joy is not about circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's about really focusing on the truth and on the hope, even in the midst of inconvenient circumstances, right? Joy and happiness to me are two different things. And there's lots of levels I can talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we could probably sit here for hours and talk about so many examples of how we were rigid (laughs) and inflexible (laughs) over the years. Right. Mm -hmm. But let's share a great story that happened recently Okay, when things didn't go as planned. Okay. I mean, it wasn't great that things didn't go as planned, but but how this flexibility that we've both kind of learned over the years and Mm -hmm. have been growing in Mm -hmm. really paid off and we were able to hold on to joy. So it was in New York City. We took all the kids, all three kids to New York this last summer. And, you know, we had these great expectations that the kids are going to love all these, you know, the sights and going yep. here and doing this and going there and all these things that we had planned. Mm-hmm. And we got to New York and our middle child, Phoebe, yeah, was kind of struggling. She, she was. was yeah, yeah. It, was she, a, it was a little tough week for Yeah, her. she yeah. was in a bit of a, a funky mood and mm-hmm. dealing with some stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and so we had to kind of accommodate her a little bit, Mm -hmm. but there was one afternoon and it was near the end of the trip that we had gone to the Empire State Building Mm -hmm. and we had a great time there, all of us. Mm -hmm. And then we were planning to go to Central Park and rent scooters and spend the rest of the day, you know, putting around Central Park and having fun. around Central Park. yeah. Yeah. So we, we came down from the Empire State Building together and we were about to head off and Phoebe kind of had a a meltdown. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. She was just not feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't want to go and she started kind of uh, complaining and and, uh, almost um, panicking almost a little Mm -hmm. bit. Like she just, I do not want to go. I want to go back to the hotel. And she was getting very agitated, I guess is a better word. Yeah, that's a good word. And of course, you and I are looking at each other like, oh, great, here we go. And, you know, the other two, yeah, yeah. and the other two kids are all excited. They want to go and we're excited. And now what? You know, we're downtown. How do we, how do we deal with this? So Mm -hmm. that was a perfect, perfect example of how we could have been very rigid. Yeah. I kind of, there was a piece of me that wanted to be like, look, Phoebe, pull it together. Get, let's get to yeah. some lunch and we're going to Central Park. Yeah. That, that was kind of, that's where my bent is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we also each kind of looked at each other and had this <laughs> understanding, of course, knowing yeah. this child that if we kind of drag her along and force her, force to, go, her to go, yeah. that she's really not going to have a good time and it's going to kind of drag the rest of us down yeah. Yeah. and it's not going to be what we expected anyway. Yeah. Right. And and the truth is, when we're in these kinds of scenarios, it's okay for an individual to be an individual. Mm-hmm. Like if Phoebe wasn't feeling it and she wasn't feeling good and really didn't want to go trekking around through Central Park, is it actually okay that she can't you know yeah. can't do that? And, and at nineteen years old, we had some other options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, honey, you graciously said, Hey, I'll ride the subway back to the hotel with her. Yep. You take the other two kids and I'll meet you in Central Park. Yeah. And we had a great day. We did. We just had to shift with the, mm-hmm. the uh, rising dynamics just mm-hmm. a little bit. And yeah, I was happy to ride back to the hotel, make sure she was all set up, everything she needed. And then I just hopped the subway back and you're right. We had a great time, the rest of us. And instead of it stealing my joy and getting frustrated and upset that we're not going to get to enjoy Central Park as a family and Mm -hmm. that's how it should be and this is a bummer and now I can't have fun, we both just pivoted and then 
I mean, I jumped in one of those fun little rickshaws with the other two kids, and <laughs> yeah, that was like the highlight time. of my trip exactly. was riding the rickshaw to Central yeah. Park with Annika and Jacob. That's right. You turned it around, and we're back in an hour, yeah. and we had a great day yeah. in the park, Absolutely. and we all experienced joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really fun. Now, you know, sometimes we have to make sacrifices in mm-hmm. order to reach that joy as well. If Phoebe had been nine instead of 19, one of us might have had to miss, That's right. miss Central Park for a little while. And and that probably would have been okay as well. I think early on in our journey, we would have tried to muscle through it, and probably all five of us would have been miserable. Yeah. But we've learned over time how we've got to be able to be flexible in the midst of that. So yeah. rather than going in with like these super high expectations and rigid mindsets that might lead to disappointment and end up stealing our joy, we've got to shift our focus to keeping our hopes high. And our expectations realistic, right? And that helps to be helps us to be flexible mm-hmm. and kind of make the best of any situation, and still be able to hold on our onto our joy, just like we managed to do in New York when Phoebe was having a rough time. She was struggling, right? yeah. yeah. So as you're heading into the holidays, maybe even more importantly into the new year, I want you to stop and reflect for a moment. Maybe even pause this podcast episode right now. Grab a notepad or your journal. And write down the expectations that you actually have for your blended family. Then be really honest with yourself about how realistic those expectations are in the blending season that you're in right now. And finally, decide what flexibility looks like that you're going to, that's going to allow you to keep your hopes high and expectations realistic. Mm. I encourage you to sit down and actually write some of that out. Because when you can think through that and be prepared on the front end, boy, flexibility is a heck of a lot easier. Yeah. And then you can still experience joy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, thankfully, we've learned to be more reflective of our own expectations over the years, which has allowed us to experience more joy, Mm -hmm. even when things still (laughs) 21 years in still sometimes don't go as we expected. That's right. And I also want to add that often things don't go as we expect because of something our former spouse does or says, <laughs> or our spouse's former spouse, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but that can really steal my joy sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. Yep. If you've ever experienced feeling devalued or dismissed or disregarded by your former spouse, Or if their negative attitudes and behaviors have led to unmet expectations and disappointment, Mm. you know, we're, we're so sorry. You know, we know how challenging that can be and how that might also impact your kids. Mm -hmm. And when this happens, sometimes your best bet is to be flexible, but sometimes you might need to be more proactive in your negotiations or even set some healthy boundaries in place. Right. Now, we don't have time to focus on all of that today, but if your ex seems to have too much influence over the amount of joy you get to experience, Mm. we encourage you to listen to episodes 112 and 113. This is a two-part series packed with practical strategies to help minimize co-parenting challenges and disappointments. Right. And we'll put a link to part one in the show notes for you. Plus, we'll throw another one in there to help you set appropriate boundaries and negotiate well with your ex-spouse. And Mm -hmm. that's episode 135. Yeah. So don't allow your former spouse or your spouse's former spouse Mm. to steal your joy. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's tackle the next joy stealer that we mentioned last week, which was the stories that we have in our head about each other. Mm. (laughs) You know, we all tend to formulate stories about each other. I thought for a long time, honey, that you were really self-focused, unaccepting and apathetic toward a lot of things. Mm. And these stories that I had early on kind of made me feel like you didn't care too much about parenting your daughter. You were content to just overlook her disrespectful behavior And I also believe that you weren't interested in partnering with me around parenting. So I had this story in my head about you, but I also had a story in my head that Annika was a bit of a spoiled brat. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like we said last week, these stories or beliefs will continually grow and eventually they'll cause relational harm Mm. because those stories about each other will lead to some strong emotions, some negative emotions, and our emotions will naturally impact how we treat each other. For sure. 
And the tragic thing is our stories are formulated from only one perspective, our own, Mm -hmm. and they don't leave much room for anyone else. Right. When I got locked into my negative story about you, honey, Mm -hmm. I became guarded. I got very defensive towards anything you had to express around all the tensions in our home and Annika's behavior. I just wanted to shut you out because my story led me to believe that you were very controlling. Yeah. So I moved to protect my daughter, and this magnified my experience of the trap teammate. That's right. And when I held on to that story about you, kind of based really only on my perspective, my experience of the stranded stranger was magnified. So I started to try to force my way in, which sometimes crossed the line, and I started to get aggressive toward you and toward Annika at times. If you weren't going to listen to me or step up to parent Annika, well, then I guess I'd just have to take over and do it. Right. Even though I'd learned from Ron Deal that a new step parent should not move into a disciplinary role because this is going to sabotage the relationship right. long term. I wonder why you felt like I was controlling. <laughs> I don't <laughs> but, know. <laughs> but the reality is that I was driven by my painful emotions and those emotions were actually rooted in my story about you. Mm. Yeah. So what were those emotions? Well, I felt left out and abandoned. I felt disregarded, unheard, alone, frustrated. Like those were all uh, emotions that I felt pretty early on. I would imagine you probably felt disappointed as well because (laughs) your original expectations were not being met. Of course, absolutely. (laughs) And I was trying to be rigid around those expectations. So all three of the joy stealers that we're exploring are actually interconnected, yeah. right? Each one tends to build on the other. We have an expectation. We experience that disappointment. That disappointment turns into a story, mm-hmm. and then that magnifies everything. And we aren't even often aware of what's happening, right? No. <laughs> the The painful emotions that were really hard for me to deal with, but mm-hmm. you were experiencing those as well. What painful emotions were you experiencing based on the stories that you had about me? What if you could experience a community that's all about healthy support, guidance, and practical strategies that help you thrive in your blended family? Well, now you can. Blending Together is a supportive community for blended family couples just like you. Mm -hmm. We've educated and supported hundreds of couples navigating the unique challenges of blending a family. Now we're inviting you to join our community and experience the transformation that awaits you. But you'll need to act fast because we're getting started soon. Mm -hmm. Blending Together is not just another community. It's a place where you'll find practical real-life strategies for building unity as a couple. And creating more connection as a family. Experiencing partnership in parenting. And even dealing with that difficult ex. Blending Together is a safe, growth-focused space where you get to connect with us and maybe more importantly, with other blended family couples who truly understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Along the way, you'll discover practical tools, guidance, and hope that empower you to find a future full of confidence and connection. When you join Blending Together, you'll get to hop into a variety of resources like access to our private Facebook group and online learning platform, monthly coaching meetings, monthly Q&As, and you'll even get to vote on the content for our monthly workshops. Mm -hmm. Blending a family can often leave couples feeling alone or isolated and stuck, and quality support can sometimes be expensive. That's why we're offering you access to all of this at a super low monthly rate, because every blended family deserves the opportunity to thrive regardless of their budget. That's right. So join us in the Blending Together community and unlock the secrets to successful blending. Together, we can create a future filled with hope, connection, and peace. But don't wait. Click the link in the show notes now. The doors will be closing on October 8th, and you don't want to miss out on this unique opportunity to create the future you really want alongside other couples who genuinely get it. Mm -hmm. Hey, we can't wait to meet you there. I felt judged, Mm. controlled, misunderstood, Mm. unloved, and of course, disappointed as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I and I did drive some of that. And I'm sorry that you had to feel those things. Yeah. And on my side, I felt alone. 
and you felt unloved right. because we had some stories and negative emotions that had been building for a while. And this impacted how we treated each other. And of course, guess what it did? Robbed our joy. But eventually we were able to reveal our stories to each other in a productive manner. That took a while. <laughs> and we started actually listening to each other's pain and some amazing things started to happen. Yeah, when we did that, mm -hmm. we started to understand each other's perspectives mm -hmm. and have more empathy for what we were each experiencing. Yeah. And we learned that our stories that were tainted by pain mm. were actually pretty inaccurate, right. right? You weren't trying to control me. No. You really just wanted to help me become a more effective parent and partner with me. Right. So your motives were good. Mm -hmm. You wanted Annika to grow in ways where she really did need to grow so that we could all experience more peace in our home and so that she would be prepared for success in adulthood. There That's were good right. things. And you really didn't want to shut me out or ignore Annika's behavior. You actually did care about becoming a more effective parent for her. And you wanted my support and input, but I, I learned over time that you were struggling with some guilt and some fear, and you were feeling ill-equipped to change your parenting approach. Mm -hmm. But because we'd both held on to our negative stories about each other and then reacted to our painful emotions, it was impossible for us to communicate on a deeper level about what was really going on under the surface. Exactly. Exactly. When we were able to talk about our stories as a story, mm. it helped us to reduce blame and it really opened the door for each of us to either confirm or correct our partner's story, right? right. Honey, your story about me was not 100% true, mm. but your story about Annika kind of was. <laughs> okay. yeah. And I needed to face that reality myself. Mm -hmm. Her behavior was pretty bratty back then, right? but only because I'd been an overly permissive parent. So it really wasn't her fault. You yeah. know, kids are going to take all the control that you give them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> However, when I did step up and mm. I started to change my parenting approach and I became more authoritative mm -hmm. Annika was able to adjust her behavior pretty quickly. She really yeah. improved and responded well to yeah. more structure. It was Absolutely. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to get us sidetracked here, but you know, the story in my head was Annika was a little brat mm -hmm. and that, that actually was inaccurate. You're right. The, the, the correct piece is that her behavior tended to be bratty mm -hmm. and she needed some discipline and yeah. she needed some direction, but, Annika's a lovely little child. Yes. I mean, we had a lot of fun as well. Yes. And boy, let me just, this is kind of a, a little <laughs> tip here. If you find yourself labeling, if you hear yourself oh, yeah. saying, this child is this, or my spouse is this, chances are you've got a story. Yeah. Because most likely that child or that spouse, that's not a part of their being. It might be a part of their behavior and, and behavior can be changed. And sometimes they're behaving be in that way because these dynamics are hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so really pay attention to those stories, right? Some of them are rooted in a partial truth. And when that happens, it can be really dangerous. And you got to got to really pay attention mm -hmm. to that. I had to let go of that story that Annika was a little brat in order for me to move forward mm -hmm. and really just embrace her and have fun with her. And it took me a little while. It yep. took me a little while. Now, here's a here's a pro tip on all of this as well. Don't believe everything you think. <laughs> I love that little saying. One of the, my old bosses used to have that up on his, uh, his bulletin board in his office and just little small print. And I've held onto that for like 20 years. Don't believe everything you think. That's what we're talking about. Don't hold on to these stories too tightly and don't react to everything you feel. Right. <laughs> when you believe a negative story and then you react to those painful emotions you certainly won't have the capacity to experience joy. No. But if you can stop in that moment when you start to tell yourself that story and you choose to simply notice that, hey, this is a story instead of buying into it, then you open yourself up to experience something that's much more helpful in these dynamics. And that's curiosity. So here's what this looks like in real life. So I observe Annika talking disrespectfully to Kim. Kim doesn't respond to the behavior. Boy, I could jump into all kinds of stories <laughs> there, right? Rather than forming those negative stories about Kim and Annika, 
I can stop myself and wonder things like, I wonder why Annika's behaving this way. Like, what's the root of it, right? Maybe she's struggling with her own painful emotions or confusion. Maybe she's missing her dad. Or maybe she's just tired, right? Maybe she's just having a crummy day like yeah. Phoebe was in New York. Yeah, right? we all have them. Exactly. <laughs> And why might Kim be choosing to not respond to this disrespect? Maybe she's feeling overwhelmed. Maybe she's struggling with guilt or fear. Maybe she's just not sure how to handle the situation. When I can stop long enough to actually ask myself these kinds of questions, now instead of harsh judgment and negative stories based on my own limited perspective, I'm starting to learn to have empathy for what might be going on for everyone else under the surface. Mm. And, and I start to experience now an openness to understanding everyone's unique perspective. It, it can really change your mindset in these moments. Yeah. And if you're able to do this, I'm telling you, it won't magically dissolve the, oh. all of the discomfort you might be feeling. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Yeah. But you will have a much better chance of staying calm, yeah. not reacting in the moment, and holding on to your joy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that's a really good point. It's not a, it's not a silver bullet, right? And also, don't misunderstand this. We're not in any way saying that you would ignore your concerns or discount how you feel about the situation. There's a time and a place to voice your concerns, to work together, to identify re reoccurring issues and come up with some healthy next steps in resolving all of those things, mm -hmm. which is what we eventually had to learn to do right. as well. What we're saying is if you want to hold on to your joy and not get hijacked by a moment of discomfort, whatever that might be, you do have a choice. You can choose to challenge the story that you're forming in your head about your family members and instead get curious about their perspectives or what might be going on under the surface for them. That's one of the first steps to moving forward. This curiosity mindset will keep you from reacting to painful emotions and mm. instead you'll have more capacity to empathize with others and hold on to your joy. Yep. And then later, when the discomfort of the moment has passed and you're feeling calm mm -hmm. and your spouse is also calm, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you can initiate that FAQ conversation mm -hmm. to share the story in your head and work through any concerns or issues, which we talked about back in episode 147. Yep. The FAQ conversation and the title of that one was Do Sensitive Conversations End Up Creating Conflict in Your Relationship? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, and, and this is important because there is a healthy, productive way to share your observations and stories. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> you have. <laughs> right? But we both when, have. <laughs> yeah, but when you're not able to do it well... As we learned early on in our journey, <laughs> then your stories and emotions are going to steal your joy and lead to painful interactions within your family. Right. So learn how to examine your stories and communicate about your concerns. And along the way, we've had to get help from trusted counselors and others to help us really master our stories. Mm -hmm. You might need to get some support as well. We're happy to partner with you for that kind of work. Just reach out and schedule a free coaching call with us. We'll put a link in the show notes where you can do that. Right. Or you can start to learn more about all this by going all the way back and checking out episode 36, How to Change Your Stories and Grow Connection. And that was an interview with our friend Mark Warren, mm -hmm. and he's like the master of learning how to master your stories. Yeah. Right? So the links to all those episodes that we're mentioning will be in the show notes. Okay, let's see how we can battle that last joy stealer, which awesome. is emotional triggers and conflict. Oh, that's a problem? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> as you well know. Before we jump into that one, let's recap this for, for just a second. So we have these high expectations and then we experience disappointment that robs our joy if we don't, if we aren't able to be flexible, but if we're holding on to those disappointments, then that starts to form a story in our head. Oh yeah. And when we get those stories wrong, that's what tends to drive the emotions. And when those emotions hit, we get triggered and then we end up in conflict. Is that right? Yep. That's how these joy stealers progress. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They build one on the other. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so let's land on this last one, emotional triggers and conflict. So last week we shared some emotional triggers that mm -hmm. we've experienced and also some that we've heard from other couples, right? right? Things like feeling abandoned, 
inadequate, unappreciated, attacked, unheard, deprioritized, unloved, Mm. disregarded, ignored, disrespected, insecure, misunderstood, (laughs) fearful, not good enough. I mean, there's many more that we could add, but you've got the idea, right? Yeah, that was quite a list, right? (laughs) And and, you know, one thing I I think it's important to pause for a moment and note that you you and I, honey, we're Mm -hmm. shifting the way that we talk about some of this by using the term tripwires rather than triggers. right? And that's because a trigger is pulled on purpose, but a tripwire is accidentally stumbled over and activated without intention, Mm -hmm. right? We found that most couples don't maliciously intend to hurt each other, (laughs) but we unintentionally say or do things that cause pain in our spouse. We trip over their tripwires. Right, exactly. And sadly, this seems to happen a lot in blended families, and that can really steal our joy. Yeah, and one of the reasons tripping tripwires seems to happen a lot is because those of us living in a blended family dynamic, we actually come into our new family structure with some emotional hurts and hangups from the past. Right. Often a previous marriage or a relationship. Yep. And we've experienced some pain and heartache. Yeah. You see, just because we've moved on with life, that doesn't mean that we've erased the past, Mm -hmm. right? The residue is still with us, tucked away in our memories. And when we experience something in the present that feels even remotely similar to that painful experience from the past, it's natural to be reminded of the heartache we endured. Mm. And when our trip wire gets tripped and we're flooded with familiar emotions connected to our past, Mm. well, it's common to experience those same painful emotions all over again. That's right. Yeah. And we explored in the previous Joy Stealer, when we experience painful emotions, we tend to react, sometimes overreact in a negative way. Right. Right. We might get controlling. That's my Mm go-to. Or withdraw to avoid. That's Uh, mine. (laughs) Yep. Maybe we react with rage and yell or become critical or anxious. Some of us turn to the bottle to numb out. We might withhold affection or information. We manipulate. We withdraw to punish. We get sarcastic or defensive. (laughs) There's so many different ways that we tend to react when we experience that emotional pain. And you've probably already made the connection here. When we react in these destructive, hurtful ways, this will almost always lead to conflict. And of course, when you're locked in conflict, Mm. you aren't experiencing a whole lot of joy. Not very fun. Mm -mm. So what can we do about this? Because we all come into our marriage with relational and emotional baggage from the past. Mm -hmm. And so we're all susceptible to getting tripped up by these painful emotions and then reacting in ways that are really unhelpful. Absolutely. And if any of this even remotely resonates with you, don't worry, you're not alone. No. (laughs) For the first 10 years of our marriage, we did not handle our tripwires in a productive, healthy way. But thankfully, over the last 10 plus years, we've actually learned ways to manage our emotions so that we can stay connected and still experience joy even when things feel a bit painful, right? Like that's something that's amazing to me as we still experience that yeah. even when it's tough way back in episode five called how to get over your hurts and triggers from the past. We offered a framework to help you deal with what we call irrational influencers and manage the difficult emotions that come when a tripwire gets activated. Yeah, and we'll put a link in the show notes to that episode, but let's just review the strategy Mm -hmm. we shared for how to handle those irrational influencers or memories from our past that come along blindsiding us with painful emotions and end up stealing our joy. Yeah, there's just a few simple steps. The first step is to own it. Okay, now this takes some vulnerability and courage. It's really hard to admit when we've been triggered by something or somebody's tripped over our tripwire from the past and that started to hijack our emotions. Right. Some of us spend way too much time entertaining what we call those irrational influencers and none of us want to think or even admit that we're being irrational at all. Right. Right. Sometimes we want to pretend we're okay. And that we're not impacted by the past experiences. Oh, that's way in the past. What does it matter? Sometimes we try to ignore it or sweep it under the rug. Oh, I don't want to deal with this, right? I want to get rid of it. 
But the reality is, in either of those scenarios, it ends up under the rug, and that big old lump is a major tripping hazard, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Builds up, (laughs) and then it explodes sometimes. That's right. (laughs) You know, often we want to blame our partner, Mm. right? But the reality is, we all need to take responsibility for ourselves, Mm -hmm. for our own tripwires and Mm. the irrational influencers that sometimes hijack us emotionally. Right. And that takes courage as well. The reality is that change always requires some courage. Mm -hmm. It's scary to explore those old wounds or commit to the work it takes to truly heal. Mm -hmm. I really like this definition of the word courage. Courage is the decision that something else is more important than fear. I love that. Yeah. So the first step is simply to own it, admit that there's something not quite right going on inside, and then decide that you're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. Taking steps towards change is more important than staying stuck in fear or denial or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. So being able to have the courage and vulnerability to own it within yourself and realize that maybe I don't have everything right. Mm -hmm. Then we have to take that next step, and that is to name it. Okay, Mm -hmm. we have to put words around it, and we've got to get specific here. Right. First, we want to name the emotion whatever you listed off a whole load of emotions earlier and then dig deep to understand what that specific emotion is connected to. Right. You know, ask yourself, what experiences do I remember from the past that made me feel that same emotion? Who was it that impacted you at some previous time? Maybe it was an spouse. Maybe it was a relationship from your childhood. So for me personally, almost all of my painful tripwires are rooted way back to my childhood, my blended family of origin. (laughs) That's where the pain of abandonment comes from for me. And I used to get tripped up and then I would react by taking control when Kim did something that made me feel like she was abandoning me. Uh, if she would change a plan without talking to me about it. Oh, it's or, a common one. Yeah, mm-hmm. or she would just miss something, you know, that I had an expectation around. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I felt abandoned. And what we found to be so interesting about this process is that when we ask couples to describe the first time that they experienced these painful emotions, 99% of the time, just like me, they recall experiences that go back to childhood mm-hmm. or back to their former spouse. Mm-hmm. Rarely, very rarely, does one of them point to their current spouse and say, it all started with you. (laughs) I never felt this feeling ever in my whole life until you, right? That's so rare. Hardly ever. So couples quickly realize that their painful emotions actually predate their current relationship. Yeah, Yeah. it's very impactful to think about. Yeah. Now, here's the key. Once you name the emotion and name that past experience that caused you to feel that same way, Now it's time to call out your irrational influencers and get really familiar with them so that you can easily recognize it when they hit. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things are they saying to you when you're flooded with pain? Mm -hmm. Honey, when you tripped over my tripwire and I'd feel inadequate, Mm -hmm. the irrational influencer would say things to me like, Mike thinks you're a horrible parent. He Mm -hmm. thinks you're lazy. Mm Mm-hmm. But when I started to call out my rational influencers and acknowledge these thoughts, I could clearly see how misguided and irrational Mm. they actually were. Mike really didn't think those things about me. But guess what? My ex-husband did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were experiencing what you experienced in the past, not what was actually true in the moment. Exactly. You know, once you've owned your irrational influencers, then you've named them and you've identified and kind of called out, we'll call it the lies, Mm -hmm. like you just said, it's not true. Now you're prepared to combat them by speaking the truth about your current situation, speaking the truth about your current spouse, and honestly, speaking the truth about you. Mm Mm-hmm. Truth is the number one weapon to combat the lies of the irrational influencers. You can use those statements of truth to help you quiet the voice of the irrational influencers and keep yourself firmly rooted in your current reality, which will help you to hold on to your joy, even when someone says or does something that rubs you the wrong way. 
This isn't just a, you mm-hmm. know, a simple platitude. It's not, it's not even like those affirmations that I read myself in the morning. It's a specific truth that combats the lie of the irrational influencer. Right. It's a very specific thing. And it's powerful. And we've experienced mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So instead of the irrational influencer of Mike thinks I'm a horrible parent, yeah. the truth was Mike wants to partner with me. Yeah. And parent together well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when you can own that truth, we respond to each other differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just recap for a second. First, you're going to own it, whatever that it is, (laughs) that irrational influencer. You're going to name it, get really specific and be able to put words around it and call it out. And then finally... What are you going to do, honey? You're going to share it. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Yep. Don't try to do this on your own. Yeah. You need support. Yep. It's great if you can share what you discover with your partner, mm-hmm. but maybe you're not ready to do that quite yet. Yep. You might need to reach out to a trusted friend or a mentor, mm-hmm. someone who's not afraid to ask you tough questions mm. and challenge you to really work through this. Right. Now, side note here, this isn't the job of those good friends who want to make you feel better (laughs) and might start bashing your spouse, you know, oh, well, they should or they could. Yeah, I can't believe you're putting up with that. Yeah, (laughs) no. (laughs) Who you want to turn to is the friend that's really going to help you focus on your own personal growth and what's Mm. best for your relationship. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends like that, but even with those friends, Sometimes I need to turn to like a counselor or a coach. Mm-hmm. Like you and I both individually have greatly benefited from that kind of individual support in a whole bunch of different seasons yeah, over the years. Absolutely. So if you are listening and you decide that you want to reach out to work with a coach or a counselor, whatever you do, please make sure that they've got specific experience or training with blended family dynamics. That's really, really important. Yeah. All right. One more thing to keep in mind. The reality is that we will all find qualities or behaviors in our family members that might tend to rub us the wrong way. (laughs) Surprise. Yeah. You know, (laughs) the people in your blended family are imperfect Mm -hmm. and so are you. Yep. Yep. (laughs) What's really important here is how you choose to respond in those moments when someone unintentionally trips over one of your tripwires. Right. Will you allow pain from the past and irrational influencers to take over and dictate a negative reaction that's bound to stir up conflict and steal your joy? Mm. Or will you choose to stop and take the time to assess the situation from an objective viewpoint Mm. that's non-judgmental and seek to understand the truth? Yeah. Understanding and managing your emotions and choosing to change your own behavior It's a choice. That's right. We all can choose. That's right. Okay. So that's your strategy for holding on to joy when difficult emotions attached to painful memories come your way. When your tripwire gets tripped, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to own your tripwire and name it. Yep. You're going to call out that irrational influencer. You're going to share it with someone that you can trust Mm -hmm. to help you with it. You're going to combat that irrational influencer with the truth. Again, this goes back to that. Don't believe everything you think and definitely don't believe everything you feel. (laughs) Be willing to challenge your thoughts and step back from those painful emotions just for a minute before you react and choose to do something different. Mm -hmm. These steps will really help you move beyond your tripwires and experience more emotional stability and joy. Right. (laughs) And as an added bonus, You'll get to minimize conflict as well. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful thing right there. For sure. (laughs) Now, if you feel like this is an area where you could use some more focus support, Mm -hmm. please reach out to us. We offer an awesome program called Relate Strong that teaches an effective and practical tool Mm -hmm. to regulate painful emotions manage conflict well, Mm. and work through tough issues as a team. We use this tool all the time in our own marriage. It's amazing. So we'll put a link in the show notes so that you can schedule a free coaching call with us and Mm -hmm. find out more about this specific program. We're here to help. And if you aren't ready to do that quite yet, that's Mm -hmm. okay too. You can simply go back and listen to episode 35 called 
Are you controlling conflict or is it controlling you? Mm, yeah, that's good. <laughs> this episode can help you to manage conflict more effectively. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, we hope that the past couple of weeks discussion has been helpful and that you've been able to identify those circumstances that come along and tend to steal your joy. And we hope you've also picked up a strategy or mindset shift that'll help you to hold on to more joy throughout the remainder of this holiday season Mm. and as you move into the new year. That's right. When your expectations go unmet and your joy is about to be robbed by disappointment, you can choose to be flexible. If you notice you're formulating some negative stories in your head about a family member and your story is about to steal your joy... Mm choose to get curious. That's right. And when someone says or does something that activates that painful tripwire from your past, choose to utilize the strategy for combating irrational influencers before they have a chance to rob you of your joy. When you choose to learn and practice healthy, effective ways to handle those common joy stealers that Mm -hmm. are bound to come your way, you'll begin to experience more joy. That's right. And we want that for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's possible. It we is. You know yep. Possible. We've done possible. it. If yeah. we can do it, so can you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for hanging in here all the way to the end of, of this two-part series. Mm-hmm. We hope that it changes something for your yes. upcoming celebrations with your family. Now, next week, we're going to have a simple step here on the show. And if you're not subscribed mm. in, the, in the podcast app of your choice, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, wherever you listen, you'll miss it because we don't send emails about it. We don't put it on our social media. The only place you can do that is if you're, if you're following the show mm-hmm. on, on your app. So make sure you click follow before you head out on whichever app you're on. But that's going to make this episode a wrap. Until next time. Until next time.